Hi, this is Alan from Alpers Group and uh, I'm just going to talk to you today about Key Factor 3 of the 20 Key Factors for Success of any project, which is funding. So, just recapping, uh, Alpers recommends the following 20 Key Factors are addressed to ensure project success. And this is the full list of uh, 20 Key Factors. We've talked about a clear and concise project brief we talked about risk assessment and contingency and uh, today we're going to talk about funding. Just uh, going over what we discussed before, a clear and concise brief that defines the scope of works, the fundamental design parameters, employers or owners requirements such as budget cost, program time schedule, specific operational performance requirements and quality requirements. The project or programme brief should reflect the vision of the sponsor of the project or programme. When investors and developers consider a potential project, they may not immediately be able to define what the end result that they're seeking may be. This is because there are multiple ways to develop any particular potential development site or investment project. Therefore, the first step in developing the particular project brief is to look at the available options for that site, for which you may need market research to see what's in demand in the area and what the market price of that uh, asset would be. Once you've identified all the possible options for any site, then you need to evaluate them and choose one as your preferred, usually the one with the highest gross development value. <coughs> The options for the development of any site may be limited by the existing planning permission, that is the category of use that the site has been granted, such as agricultural land, residential use, commercial use. You may have in mind that the site you identified is suitable for a particular purpose because there is a shortage of a particular type of development or building in that area. For example, you may consider that a hotel may be needed in a particular area because there is a shortage of such accommodation. The first thing you need to check if the site does not already have permission for such uses under use class orders is if the local planning policy will support such a development. The project site may be suitable for different types of development uh, such as commercial, residential or industrial and you need to evaluate different options available to you on the site. You may be able to develop for example 16 houses on a one acre site with residential usage and the necessary planning permission. Alternatively, a hotel usage may give a lower return on investment. Retail usage or industrial may be possible, uh, subject to planning permission, as could petrol filling station or electric charging station in the right location. <coughs> The site may have an existing usage class that allows you to develop without the need for seeking a new planning permission. If not, you will need to seek outline and detailed planning permission unless you have permitted development rights under the Town and Country Planning Order 2015. You will need to have building control permission for carrying out the works in accordance with the building regulations for any options you might choose. And the risk of the alternative options need to be evaluated, especially for the risk that planning permission may not be granted for your chosen development. Maybe a better idea to seek another site that's easier to develop, uh, rather than spend a lot of time and money uh, trying to seek planning permission that may not be forthcoming. <coughs> so you decide on what you prefer to do on a particular site um, and you decide on the risk of uh, whether you will get the planning permission from uh, engaging a planning consultant or an architect who has uh, experience in the area of that lo local authority and uh, seeing uh, on the balance of probabilities from uh, previous planning permissions that have been granted whether this one is likely to be granted it on the site you're looking at. Uh, once you're clear what you're going to develop then you can finalise your project brief to your designers and contractors. <coughs> so key factor two is the risk assessment and contingency. Uh, from the above evaluation of the possible development of alternatives and options you, you may conclude there are certain risks um, and you need to schedule these risks and quantify them in terms of money and time. 
Um, obviously, if you've got permitted development rights on a particular site, then this reduces the risk considerably regarding uh, planning permission because you don't need it. Um, once you're clear that you have the planning permission or when you may be granted the planning permission, you'll be able to finalise your project brief. Obviously, if the planning permission comes back and it's not exactly what you asked for, then you need to modify your brief to your designers and contractors. So then each risk uh, needs to be evaluated in terms of the best, the most likely and the worst outcome for cost risks um, and the probability of those outcomes, each one. Um, and a schedule um, of all of the time risks as well, the, the best outcomes, most likely outcomes, worst outcomes. So you fully risk assess the program of works and uh, the schedule of works, the, the scope of works. <clears throat> and you take a decision about whether to acquire the site um, based on your uh, risk of getting planning permission. And it may be that you decide to mitigate the risk um, by taking an option to purchase, which means that you only have the right uh, to purchase the site once the planning permission uh, is granted, but you don't have that obligation to, to purchase the site. You can forego your option if you wish. So in summarising the uh, risks, you take account of those you can mitigate straight away and you take account of the um, time and cost risks in the funding provision that you're seeking. So what does this look like? Um, you'd get uh, a hypothetical project with a detailed breakdown of costs that would include the acquisition costs um, or the fee costs in terms of the option if you choose to just take an option subject to planning permission. Um, you, you would have uh, survey fees, sales duty, land tax, VAT, planning consultants costs for any preliminary inquiries that you, you've made before uh, in, uh, taking on the site, architectural feasibility study. Then you would have uh, design and consultants costs for the execution of the project. In this case, we've allowed approximately 10% of the value of the construction costs as a budget figure. The construction costs themselves could be either main contractor or specialist trade contractors and a construction management arrangement. So there's a sort of balance between the fees and the contractor's costs that needs to be found there. <coughs> and we've allowed for a summary of all the cost and time risks, which we will have scheduled separately, a contingency allocation of 150,000 meaning that um, although you don't intend to spend 1,135,000, you get provision for that funding and you keep this 150,000 contingency in case you need it to address the risks that you've identified for the project. So this is a principle that we follow on all projects that um, uh, we um, carry out. Uh, every project is risk assessed and the appropriate cost and time allocation uh, made in contingency. Uh, if you want to talk to us about it, any of the contents of this video or any projects that you've got in mind, um, these are our details, www.alpasgroup.com. Contact alan at alpasgroup.com. Uh, my phone number is 07539 141257. Uh, if you want to book uh, an exploratory call with me, you can go to this Calendly link, uh, https colon double slash calendly.com slash alan je, and uh, you can also get a free contracts list from us, which uh, gives you an idea of the risks associated with different types of contract. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video about funding. Um, it's very important that you get adequate funding for your project. And uh, by following the risk assessment uh, pro process, you can allocate the right contingency for your project um, at whatever stage you're looking at it. Um, see you in the next video. Cheers for now.